it's that time of the week again. It's time for Chit Chat Across the Pond. This is episode number 571 for November 9th, 2018. And I'm your host, Allison Sheridan. And we have back on the show, in a very unusual show this time, Joe Duganzik of Smarter Home Life. Hello, Joe. Hello, Allison. How are you doing? Well, right now we are standing outside of Joe's actual tiny home where he films all of his world famous videos. Steve is inside and he's gonna try to record on video as we're also recording on audio. And we're gonna see what the tiny home of the automation of the future looks like. That sounds like a lot. I I hope I can live up to the hype. (laughs) All right, so uh, let's go inside the house. We are opening the door. Opening the door, nothing fancy here. It, it is a regular door. There is a August smart lock. This is the first generation August smart lock. It's still, still not on the same battery, mind you, but uh, this is the one from uh, about four years ago, actually. Soon to be. All right. Well, I'm in love with my August lock, but we're actually standing in the dark right now in Joe's in dark. tiny home. And what I see is, uh, well, why don't you describe the layout from left to right first? Okay. So from left to right in, in the dark, should I bring on some lights? Oh, maybe, maybe we just, should do that. Okay. I'm going to do this manually just because just for now, we'll get into some fun stuff in a minute. And uh, so we're going to bring up some uh, overall general, I call it everyday general lighting that fits for most purposes. This is the nighttime version. And there's a daytime version, which is a little bit less bright to so save energy. So from left to right, we have our, we have an office space. Now, mind you, this is a 390 square foot. I measured guest house. I'm supposed to be looking at the camera, I guess, and so This is my first, like, walk and talk. This is like an episode of The West Wing. Is this Aaron Sorkin writing this? Joe anyway. is used to doing his shows solo, so yeah, it's pretty so weird camera, for him. It's weird. We have a cameraman. Places. All right, so I think I'll get it figured out. So from left to right in this tiny home, I call this the main space. This is my office. Now, one, one thing you'll notice, there's a chair there, which, of course, is very I helpful to I think there's to coffins sit. bigger than this. Right. <laughs> so this is the office. It always, you think about it, and I converted this recently from a, just a sitting desk to a standing conversion desk. But it's also the thing, when you're in a tiny home, what do you do with your office chair? I wish there was a trap door that would just disappear <laughs> downward into, but you always, I, it winds up in the bedroom. But anyways, this is the office space. It's delineated from the rest of the space by this sofa table with the lamps and so forth. And uh, there's it's a got little... a giant 27-inch iMac. You could have put, like, maybe an original Mac would have fit better in here. Well, <laughs> I just didn't quite have that. I, I don't have the space for it, unfortunately. <laughs> but anyways, this is a late 2016 fully souped up uh, i7 uh, 4, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, iMac. And a standing conversion desk. And I, and so and this Mac happens to run pretty much all the automation for the tiny smart home using a, uh, a server-based system called Indigo. Uh, very, if you're if you're in the Mac world, you probably have heard of it. Uh, if you're into home automation at all, or you, or just even if you're not, um, I'm actually gonna slide your tiny chair out okay. of your tiny office Please so do. that I can get close to you because my arm's getting tired okay. reaching all the way across your office. <laughs> right. So, anyways, it is a very small office. I kind of kind of I'm in here sometimes, and sometimes if I'm doing some writing or some script writing, it's off to another place with uh, with my iPad. But generally, I'm just in here to work and. That's about it, and I've got a. We have a bookcase uh, a with look. some fabulous movies. Almost a hundred percent overlap with our uh, <laughs> with our movie collection. We were noticing, you know, I mean, not everybody has Chicken Run. I, that's true. It's such a great movie. It's such a fantastic movie. And yes, actual physical media, not everything on streaming. <laughs> exactly. We've uh, got some Star Trek things. We got an NC seventeen oh one A. Yes. And because I am definitely a sci-fi uh, nut, and of course some little smart home things. I use this also as the backdrop for my uh, news uh, videos, where I'm covering current news and things like that. And uh, so this is one part of the set also for the smarter home life. So, um, so when videos. you're uh, when you are doing your recording, is your back to this uh, to this bookcase and the uh, camera is no, the towards back the is middle of the room? It's about like this, and then the camera is usually kind of just in front of the fridge, so it gets this whole little area back here. So yes, it is, let me, from the middle of where his chair would be, one, two, three, I can't quite take four steps to get to his refrigerator. So I was just in the kitchen, but I'm back now in the office. Right, yes, (laughs) a very short commute. (laughs) And and good for snacks. (laughs) But it's a very compact setup. One of the things, a challenge in the tiny home is either everything is put away or your place is a mess. There is no middle ground. So you generally have to think, uh, when you do a video production, 
you have to make sure, okay, did I get everything right? Did I cover everything? Oh, okay, I can put everything away now and actually live once again. So, because uh, otherwise you just don't get to actually have your space back. Well, it forces you to be neat. You can't leave things crapped up because yes. it's like a, a tissue to make away, a mess. I put everything away just for your visit. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so this is fake. It's not this perfect. Right. <laughs> All right. So if we, uh, so in terms of lighting, talk about the lighting we're looking at here. So some of the, uh, the lighting uh, in, in this home, which was, uh, this is a guest house, basically. So it's a very, it's a, basically think of it as a tiny one bedroom apartment. And the lighting was, there was no, um, the lighting was what was built in. So it was your uh, recessed cans in, for this room and then the lighting that's part of the, the fan kit. Otherwise, I put all of the track lighting in and all of the other lighting, the table lamps and, and uh, kind of underlit, backlit uh, TV stand with Philips Hue so that I could convert this space to different uses and adjust the space's um, intentions, basically, via lighting. And that's done through the automation and the scenes. I like the idea of intention. So like you say, day, daytime events, things I'm doing at night, it's not about... Uh, how many lumens it is. It's about what is the feeling and the ambience and what part of the, the room is lit. And I can show you, um, uh, if I move to um, from Everyday General to Office Focus, you'll notice that the rest of the room will dim a little bit. We'll get a little bit of colored lighting from the LifeX Z strips, and this area will be a little bit brighter lit. Now you might think, well, why would you want brighter light if you're working at your computer? Well, I might be writing something down on a post-it note or maybe not writing something, but generally it's to give a little bit more focus and attention to this corner of the space. And I've got four different lighting scenes that can adapt, or actually more, uh, for the whole space to adapt to different purposes. I like the way the uh, under the TV it's glowing a light, uh, a light turquoise as well over the Apple TV down there. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of interesting because the question I was going to ask was, geez, Joe, how lazy are you? You can lean over and reach a light switch. Why would you have to have all this automated lighting? Lighting, But you're doing a lot of different lighting changes throughout this room. That's right. Like you say, the track lighting, there's the LifeX Z strip. You've got another set of track lighting. You've got the light under the TV. We have apparently a spotlight right on us right here, which is also <laughs> nice. Is That's for bad. the post-it note reading. Uh, right, of course, of course. Um, there are, uh, throughout the entire space, there are approximately 45 to 50 individual light sources, most of which are- Are you are, kidding? Most of which are separately controllable and adjustable, and about one third of that is actually smart lighting that can control color temperature and color. The rest of it is controlled simply with traditional dimmers uh, that are full bright to, you know, to dark and everywhere in between. Wow, I, that might be more lights I than we have lighting. in our house. <laughs> yeah, usually. And some people might think it's overkill, but when you get the full explanation, it's okay, it actually does make sense. Most people wouldn't do it because most people just think that lighting is, I just put in a table lamp, right? I screw in a light bulb into my fan kit and I'm done. That's what we do. <laughs> I can help you. I can help you to upgrade to gourmet lighting, as I call it. <laughs> okay, so this was, uh, we've been in the office we've here. We've been in the office for and, too long. And it's time so, to take a break. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Shall we go over to the kitchen? Should we get a snack? Uh, yes, let's, okay. let's walk all the way to the kitchen. One, oh two, three. Okay, actually, and this is, as I like to call Wait, it, this Let me corner. put the chair back. Maybe, maybe we should switch positions here. here. So one of the important things in a smart home is you want multiple ways to control it because you might not be near your phone. Uh, maybe you don't have voice control or your voice control is out of whack um, if you're using Lady A and she doesn't respond to you. She's in that mood she gets in. Or you might be near a switch and physical controls are still super important. The reason is, is because of muscle memory. I know because I put all this stuff together, but I know that the third button down, if I double tap it, will bring light on over here. So I can do that, double tap, and the lights will adjust cross your fingers, <laughs> so that now we have more light over here. And you've noticed that just as a, just a little bit different lighting in terms of, because maybe you don't need colored light or mood light if you're making something in the microwave. We went back to white light on the LifeX Z. The rest of the lights changed over. We added a little bit of interest with toe kick lighting underneath the cabinets. Oh but, my goodness, I am missing toe kick lighting. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how you're living your life. <laughs> And then we've got brighter light here so that you can see what you're doing. So this is quick prep, which means that you've got your coffee, your toaster, your microwave, and all the things that you need. Now this is called, back to the tiny home aspect, hiding things in plain sight. Originally these were in my cabinets. So he's holding a cup I'm for those on audio. A saucer, yes. Uh, good. Can you narrate? Because I'll forget. Yes, the, 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 that's the, a cup, the, not the, a saucer. The cup, not a saucer. <laughs> there are saucers over there. So I ran out of space to actually hide things and I said, 
okay, I'll just put things in plain sight. And it makes sense because this is where I make my coffee and tea and beverages and so forth. And so this is called quick prep. So back to the light switch, what we're looking at here is is uh, two toggle switches, but then some sort of smart thing. It's got uh, eight little tiny buttons. A bunch of them are blue, some are green, one's red. Uh, who makes that? This is from Insteon, and it is called, uh, well, the old, they just call it a uh, keypad dimmer now. It used to be called keypad link, kind of a fun techie name. And these are keypads that you can interact with and program the functions of, but they also act as a dimmer. So this actually physically is connected to the light on the other side of this wall and is, of course is automated um, but it's a it's for the patio light so it actually doubles as a dimmer for the circuit it's connected to and then virtually for anything that you virtually connected to in terms of on off lights or actions oh so it's doing double duty there that's cool so another double duty and this is kind of a fun easter egg thing so you might you know remember the old adage and I'm still not looking at the camera, but anyways, <laughs> one day we'll fix that in post, right? Um, Don't worry, there's another camera on you oh, down that's there. Right. Multiple cameras. So one of the things, you remember kind of the old days, people would say, oh, don't leave the toaster plugged in, because if you leave, somehow you leave your house and you leave the toaster plugged in, somehow your house will burn down. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We all know that. Now, it's hard. There's, um, there's this table here, and I've got stuff underneath it, and I designed these lovely, I didn't design them, Ikea did, but I put these lovely curtain panels on the front of it so that you wouldn't see what's underneath it. But you can't really access the plugs that easily, right? So the, the toaster and the coffee maker, and of course the microwave, not really concerned about the microwave burning the house down, but the toaster, I don't know, maybe on some uh, plane of existence could burn the house down. So the question would be, how do you bring power to the toaster and the coffee maker if you want them to be sort of virtually unplugged. Okay, now, and what do you do? So I have a smart plug and I have an action that's tied into one of these buttons. Now you'll and see- And the buttons he's pointing at again are these same Insteon ones Insteon on, the, on ones. the switch, right? This one down here is called Rainbow Coffee. Now there's a <laughs> rainbow light because rainbows <laughs> underneath the thing, but it also says coffee. The coffee is under is the secondary option, which means if I double tap on it, that means something will happen. Now, Allison, I invite you to double tap that button and do it just uh -oh, like a pressure's on. On I have to be able to read this. Which one? The blue one, third one from the bottom. Or third, third from the top. Oh, there we go. I'm going to double tap? Double tap, just like a mouse. Okay. Is toast going to come up? We're waiting with excited anticipation. The little light blinked. You didn't do it. Didn't do I it right? Try double tapping it in. Tried it again. It's Coffee blinked. and toaster power is now on. <laughs> Now, Something somewhere spoke from back Mac, over in the uh, yes, in the office. In the office, the Mac, the Mac has a rotating set of funny lines. That's actually not one of the funnier ones. Uh, actually, if maybe it'll actually, uh, if we turn it back off again, because it's trying to make coffee, of course. <laughs> okay, I just burned his house down. Power course. conservation mode is now enabled. Otherwise known as I might have turned off the power, but maybe not. Anyway, nice, nice. there's a bunch of rotating funny lines, I swear, it's, you know, uh, tip your waitress. Um, <laughs> anyways, what it does is it brings the power on for about 30 minutes and then it pr automatically turns it off or you can switch it off um, yourself manually. Something else that it does, and it, this is the smart aspect of it, is that since that button also controls the light underneath, that... He that just hit the button again. I turned the button and I turned it off. It's sometimes it loses its mind, that's why it blinks. I can turn it back on again, but I had to set it up so that if I double tap that and I control it, um, that it maintains the status of the light independent of whether I'm turning the coffee and toaster mm -hmm. on or off. So that's some of the, this is, this is advanced home automation because I have a server that I can actually use code and use state level variables to know what devices are on or off and how I'm controlling things and maintaining the state, not only of lights, but of all of these individual buttons. All these buttons don't just light up because magic happens. <laughs> They're all programmed so that the system knows the state of all the lights and appliances oh. and all the bunch of variables, and it's maintaining those states and using triggers. So it needs to know which one's on before it turns it off or off Correct. before it's on and power in either a, way, right? And in addition, watch, watch this. So- He's um, doing something on his phone now. Do something on the phone. This is Indigo. This is the device interface for Indigo. Now I'm going to scroll down to the GR, oh, to the GR Rainbow Light. The GR Rainbow Light is tied in virtually with that keypad button. Now if I turn it off here, 
turns the keypad button off because the system understands that that light was actually turned off from anywhere. Okay, so again, so this app you're running here is by whom? This is Indigo Touch, and it's by the same company, Indigo Demotics, who make the Indigo server software. And again, likewise, if I turn the keypad button back on, the light turns on physically, and of course it updates the app. Oh, wow. Wow. So yeah, you have done some high-level uh, graduate coursework here? Uh, just a tiny little bit. <laughs> All right, where are we going now? Uh, let's go to the fridge. I think the fridge just turned on. This will, be see some, this will be something quick. This is something about how I do productions here. When you're in a tiny home, and especially a, a home that has tile floors, and when you're doing high-level production stuff, you want to make sure that you start with as good, uh, as excellent of audio as you can. Unfortunately, this guy makes a lot of noise, and it bounces off the wall, and it bounces off the tile. So I built some routines for, say, like studio mode. So I can say studio mode on, the fridge is on a smart plug. The fridge is now off. And you guys, a... uh, the audio listeners definitely heard it go off right there. So he was just using the uh, Indigo app again on his phone. That's right. This is a, just a custom uh, action group that I executed. It also, it not only turns the fridge off, but it will turn it back on in an hour and a half to make sure that I don't leave the house on accident and have everything melt and get, <laughs> you know, unrefrigerated. It also does the same thing. It shuts the uh, nest down. It also shuts the ceiling fan down. It does all that for that time period and then brings it all, it reverses those actions in an hour and a half. I hope that's the uh, nest thermostat, not the nest protect smoke and CO sensor that you meant when you said it turns it off. Right, it is the <laughs> nest thermostat. I actually don't have the nest smoke <laughs> detector. <laughs> So that's one uh, additional way of uh, when we're talking about in, in a tiny, in a, well, not a tiny home, in a smart home that you can actually reduce uh, some noise for when you're doing uh, video work. Because when I was doing video work, I just found I'm always shutting the fridge off or I'm always turning something. And what happens, the best way to learn how to do home automation and to create um, a smart home in your own home is first of all, try to figure out all of the pain points, <laughs> things that you do on a recurring basis and you think, I wish I just had a button for that. That's where the smart home and the home automation really comes into play. I like it. I like it. So do we keep moving here? Let's keep moving. Um, there's not now, a... is this the most amount of light we can have for Steve? We oh, no, promise... we can. Yeah, we can go back. Well, <laughs> do, you, do you want to see the maximum amount of light? Yes, all the lights. All... I want... There are four lights. What's the top item on that list? All the lights full. Can I press it? Press it. This is on his phone. Press it. All right, now Steve's... <laughs> okay, the ISO on Steve's uh, GoPro was set to high. It's we'll see how that video berserk. came out. Oh, but that's nice. This wow. Is, this is maximum brightness, all lights across the entire, I was going to say property, but... Um, all 45 different light sources. All 45 different light sources. And this is controlling not only the Insteon dimmers and built-in you know, uh, scene you know, commanders, basically, but also LifeX and Philips Hue lighting, all integrated uh, back to the uh, Indigo system. Wow, this is this is bright. So this, is this bright. might actually be nice for his video. He was, he's probably thinking, is, yeah, is why it, didn't you do that a while ago? Do you, this is good. Okay, this well, is we, better. We'll, we'll we're getting a board. thumbs up from our cameraman. Excellent, excellent. In the kitchen, um, there aren't that many smart things, um, not the smart things hub, but there aren't that many smart things here in the kitchen other than yet another control panel. Um, so another, is that the exact same set of controls or is this different? Oh, no, this is different because you want to have different, because you have to think about, okay, in a smart home, if I have physical controls, what am I nearby? What makes sense? This is another dimmer. The blender. That's right. The bl that's exactly right. Why are but, we not making margaritas with that button yet? We just, we just had some. Oh, that's we why. Could make that's why I knew that was. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, take, take a look at the labels. I'll take my drink out of the way right. here. But take a look at the um, what are actually labeled on the keypad. And tell me, or, or, or play, play around with it. Okay, so it says kitchen left and kitchen right. Both lights are on. I'll hit kitchen left. And my left light went off, press kitchen right, and I'm guessing, oh, just that one of the three track lights. Correct. Because That's an all... unusual light, Steve. Look up into that. The, uh, the bulb this is, is a very par... This is an LED PAR 30 by TCP Industries. It's one of the, TCP makes some of the most compatible and beautiful LED light sources that you can buy. And they are dimmable from a half a percent to a hundred percent, and they look theatrical. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what else we got here? I just stared into the light. Now I can't read it. He's What's seen he say? The light. 
Living Track Quick Prep. Now, did you label all of these? Yes. The, the best thing about these Insteon little control panels, they've got uh, clear buttons that you can swap out, and then you can print your own labels. So they're okay, very so customizable. That's not, that's not an LED in there with that writing? Uh, no, <laughs> there's not. But you can customize the uh, little, they have little filters, uh, color filters, and that's how I've customized them. So the blue ones are individual devices, and the green ones are scenes. Oh, okay. So down at the bottom left, we've got Kitchen Living. I'm going to hit that once. So again, Should I hit it twice? Nope. Once is the first option. Twice is the second option. Okay. So now we've gone into kitchen mode, and Ooh. you've seen that we've moved the focus of the room to the kitchen. So this is your, you have your guests over here are having canapes, but you want to make them another martini? Exactly. Okay. Why aren't and we again, making martinis? Uh, I, you didn't tell me you wanted martinis. <laughs> I would have gotten the extra vodka. I, we've got some lovely wine. Do you want some red? Do you want some inexpensive red wine from Safeway? <laughs> no, I think we're good. <laughs> okay, let me put. Uh, so I turn that off to get everything back up. Or uh, well, let's see. Steve is actually nearby. There's a red button behind you, Steve, that'll actually bring all of the lights back to that massively bright. Just okay. tap that once. Steve's doing one hand behind his back and. He's Bingo. got all his lights we back. Now oh, are zoom. Okay. So again, uh, and that's also kind of an emergency button. If you're at the front door, you walk in the house, and maybe there's something wrong. Something seems strange. Maybe there's a burglar that hasn't been yet detected by your motion sensor. You can <laughs> or the fact uh, that you can see six feet down the hall. Uh, yes, oh, exactly. Okay. Right. You mean in another house? But right? again, with yeah. physical buttons, you really want to make sure that they make sense as to where you are. Oh right, right. I got you. You're reaching for it. You say, "I want to make a." Because even in the smart home with smart lighting, we've all we've all been sold on this concept of smart lighting and you control it with an app but lighting is something that you need to have happen immediately because we all know when you when you press a regular light switch or you turn something on or off it just happens right 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 so with something like that you press a button and it happens and you physically even if you know which button to push you can reach around a wall and you don't have to physically look at it because you know where it is by by touch yeah i really like that so we've done the physical buttons we've done the phone but I see a Google Home sitting there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm guessing there's something to control. Uh, uh, Siri is probably here in the house somewhere. Yeah, I'm guessing somewhere. the lady, Lady A, is lady in here a, somewhere. She's sitting over there. That's right. There's so, are you? Do you use any of them to control the house? I do. And uh, let me think. Um, Which is the least recalcitrant of the three? Let's let's do this. Say you want some uh, some music, right? And absolutely, uh, you know, I love I, music. I do my. I don't know what's going to play to be honest. So who knows what's going to happen? I have my own iTunes library. I don't use a lot of the Spotify services and so forth. I just kind of add music as, as I need to. But I've added different um, sequences. Again, just thinking, what, a, what am I pressing too many buttons? What am I going to my Mac for too often? So let's do this. And my apologies for setting off your devices. He's not really sorry. <laughs> hey, Google, turn on speakers and randomize audio. Google Home's blinky some lights. They're spinning. Randomizing iTunes playback. Now, it's controlling the Google Home speakers from the Mac through a program called Airfoil. which oh, right. From which, Rogue Amoeba. That's right. And this allows you to cast um, using Google's uh, cast protocol. Um, I'm going to bring the audio down just a little bit so we don't override. Why do you just yell at him? Um, you know why? Because she can't do exactly what I need her to do. So I'm going to go into my own app and I'm going to make a change. He's changing the volume using his app, bringing it down a little bit. And bring it down a little bit more. That's a lot of sound out of that little tiny thing. We could go max, but it'll kill it. Yeah, it'll kill your. No, your but that eye. was that was pretty. That was it's, pretty it's loud. Pretty I good, thought there yeah. were other speakers around. I literally. It's just the one. It's actually a good, the main. This is the original Google Home speaker, and that's at thirty percent volume. Of course, it was right up on top of it. Well, of course. But anyways, so what the Mac did was basically initiate a connection to all three speakers across the home. I have two Google Home Minis and one of these guys, but the Airfoil software can communicate to uh, AirPlay 2 devices and also Bluetooth devices. Oh, so the nice. Bluetooth devices will cover your non, you know, your Bluetooth speakers, but they'll also cover all of your Alexa devices as well. Okay. And so this is, uh, it's a custom audio group and it connects and, and basically does whole house audio. And I gave it a secondary command because with Google Home and the Google Assistant, you can give it two commands concatenated by and. Okay, so, so twice as smart as uh, Siri. 
Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and so, and I've got... Siri's like one minute Tom, right? Yeah, <laughs> you right. tell her one thing, the next thing, poof, yeah, that's already it's, gone. It's gone. She, she's forgotten about it. So I can start a workout playlist. I can do next and previous tracks. I can do, you know, resume and so forth. Or I can just say, you yeah, we're done with the music. Hey, Google, turn off speakers. She's, he's, he, she's trying? Now, what it's doing is it's stopped iTunes playback. It's disconnected the audio from the speakers. It's also then reconnecting and resetting the volume level to the standardized assistant voice volume level that I want and then disconnecting again. And again, maintaining all of that state through the app and all the variables. And the app is not the Google app. We're back to the... We're back to the Indigo Touch app. Indigo Touch app. Okay. This is, again, like you talked about, a PhD or something, high-level smart home. When you can control something and you can write the code, this is Python, a mix, this is a mixture of Python and AppleScript managing all of these, all of this functionality. Very cool. Very you cool. notice that the fan just started. Uh, so the ceiling fan, just a quick diversion here, the ceiling fan is also on an Insteon specialized uh, little module that sits in the canopy. It controls both the light and the fan, low, medium, high, and off. It reads, uh, the Mac is also connected to the Nest thermostat and reads the temperature every 15 minutes. It looks at the various temperature bands, makes a decision, and sets the fan. And it's sending it to the Indigo app. Yep. Oh, wow. The Indigo is the master control center for everything in this home. It is Joe's brain. It is my brain, yes. And it is so awesome. everything but the lock. That's interesting. Why not the August lock? The August smart lock is kind of an isolated device. Um, On purpose? I, by design? Um, or Yeah, for the security context. It's also the, the older version. So they have a Z-Wave version of the, of the August lock, which you could connect to a Z-Wave controller. Uh, Indigo is a plug-in-based architecture, so you can get a plug-in for, for Z-Wave. Actually, it's part of the, the, the build. But anyways, you can... Um, if, it, if I had the Z-Wave version of the August or another Z-Wave lock, I could control it. But, you know, I'm okay with the security context of it being completely isolated. It unlocks when I approach. It relocks after a couple minutes. And I'm fine with that. That's the, my favorite thing about the device, right? It, 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 it's just... It, if you don't have a smart lock, I don't know what you're doing with your life. <laughs> now, I have been uh, making fun of Siri quite a bit here, but are you using Siri for anything here? You know, I'm sorry, Siri, but... I'm not. <laughs> and I don't have a HomePod. Um, I thought about it, and then I looked at the price, and I thought, sorry, Tim. <laughs> a little too much. You know, it's funny. We uh, were just talking last night. We had uh, uh, Troy Shimkus was over at the house, and we're sitting there chatting away, having dinner. And Siri from the HomePod just kept coming on and chatting with us and saying all kinds of random things. You remember that used to be a problem with the with uh, Lady A. Oh, yes. But she seems to have stopped doing it and, mm. and, has, and has tricked her friend Siri, Siri into helped. doing it for us. That's crazy. So it's constant, and it's never anything traceable back to even a word that had an S in it, I don't think. And she just randomly pops up. And, of course, what she's usually saying is, sorry, I can't do that. Look at your phone. Right. <laughs> Now, something else in, in the kitchen, there's not that many other smart things, but there's there's tiny home aspects to the kitchen. One of the things, and this was a challenge here, and I haven't solved it because this is a rental, and I thought about I know my landlord's very well, and we've thought about uh, fixing this issue. We just never got around to it, and I'm going to be moving out in a few months anyways. So you'll notice that there is, you know, you've got your, um, you know, keypad here. You've got quad we're going to do a set change here. The spin, um, the spin, spin around. Move. Spin around. Um, you've got your keypad, and then you've got quad outlets. And I upgraded one of the outlets to also include USB power, which is just fantastic. If you haven't done this, please do it, because mm -hmm. then you don't have all the little wall. Are they doors. both GFI or just one of them? Uh, this is the GFI, and then this is a traditional circuit. Okay. Um, but you'll notice that that's the only power there. There is no power on this wall, which does make, even though the appliances look pretty here, they have to move. <laughs> they're fake. They're they're basically sets, right? Yeah, now. they're sets. Yeah. So it is a little bit of a challenge um, here, and we thought about putting power on this wall, just you know, because the shower is behind it, it creates additional um, challenges to uh, to do that. So living in a tiny home, you're always trying to think of okay, where do I put things, and so it, it makes it a little more complicated. Where you know, if I want to make pancakes and scrambled eggs at the same time, I've got multiple appliances that all have to be here and plugged into one area because I can't spread out as much as I want to. And you'll so, notice also that um, 
This is a little kitchen island that I bought at Ikea just to give myself a little bit more counter space and a little bit more um, just storage to have a little drawer and a couple of more shelves. And when you say a little bit more, it's like 60% more because the counter is so it small. It is so small. So but, uh, back to this, the, the tiny home here now, um, this is a room that I have seen in your videos, but I don't see any video gear out here. Can we take a look at where the video gear lives when it's not? So this is almost all of his house. Right. I don't think we're going to go into his bedroom. Probably not. Uh, in fact, we're probably going to keep the camera averted from his bedroom because <laughs> I put my luggage in there and it looks uh, like a mess, but he had it all cleaned up. Right. Um, but we're going to go into the tiny closet, I That's think. That's right. Absolutely. All right. So Steve, uh, make sure you divert the camera as we go back here. I will try to not trip on my way in. All right. So how about if Joe goes in? I don't know that we can both be in there. Tiny. I might need to it's just pretty, have it's pretty here. Tiny. Well, let's do it just oh, for the comedy. Okay. No, no. <laughs> How many people can you fit in a tiny closet? So, um, Actually, you might want to come from this side, Steve. So this is the only closet. It's a walk-in closet. It is very, very full with everything from clothing to cleaning accessories and, and, and shoes and things <laughs> like that. But largely 95% of the gear that I shoot with for um, Smarter Home Life and any other video productions that I do exists from here <laughs> across this shelf. So he's, he's pointing at a maybe four foot long shelf here. He's, what do we got here? We got a tripod. There are actually on this shelf alone, I think we actually have um, eight or nine tripods. Wow. Because there are a bunch of lighting tripods. There's an entire green screen set and background back here. Um, there's also the controller for my um, slider for, um, for my camera. These are two lights. I'll show you. This is kind of a cool thing. <laughs> Only if he can uh, pull it around the corner here. So this is looks like a... Uh, this is a studio light. So this is, again... Just you have describe to, what it looks like for the audio people. This is a boxy, rectangular um, maybe light. That like you, the size of a shoe box. Maybe, yeah. a little, uh, maybe a boot box. Right. And, you know, these are all LED because, of course, LED saves energy but also puts out less heat. So right. when you're doing long productions, you don't want a lot of heat. One thing that you can save money on generally is if you want to go LED, don't buy the lights that already have their own soft boxes and special fancy features. Buy the ones without the soft boxes. Buy your own material for $8 on Amazon. And he's got a bunch of Velcro it. He's got a bunch of uh, white cloth here. And this is diffusion cloth. Oh. And, and he's then, opening up the light panel. This is and pretty these cool. Light panels use magnetic color filters. So he just so pulled a rectangle off the front that's an amber light filter, and underneath, oh, a bunch of little tiny LEDs cool he's letting white me touch. LEDs, so that's an array of, I think, I don't know, hundreds of these. Right. And they have a couple different uh, filters. One. This for, would be really harsh. Very if harsh. this was on, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. So okay. once you put a fil once you put one of the filters on it, they have a blue filter for even bluer light, even though mm -hmm. the light that you'll get out of it natively. I was going to say, I never want it more blue. <laughs> right, yeah. Some people do. Okay. Um, this will give you that warm white light, and then once you put the diffusion filter back on, you'll actually bring it down about another. Um, That's uh, funny. It's, it's, it's just. It's a degree I mean, of, of, I gotta of say light it, diffusion. I got to say, it looks a little crappy, but it's for for eight bucks. For, yeah. Versus those fancy light boxes. Right. Wow. And those light Light boxes um, tend to go for hundreds of dollars, and I got these uh, lights from Amazon for about $125 each. Wow. And I use two of these, um, plus a third wow. one sometimes in my production. And again, with the appropriate uh, storage and hooks and so forth, everything somehow lives in here. <laughs> As he just hung but it up noticed, on there. You notice that there's like a quarter inch of spacing between this one and the next one over. Oh uh, yeah, and you might be exaggerating on a quarter of an Maybe inch between quarter, the next yeah. spacing. Wow. Now yeah. I do want people to see the uh, who are watching the videos and we'll describe it here, but these there's a whole bunch of little tiny drawers. Mm -hmm. They're like maybe eight or ten inches across yep. and two you or three inches tall. We got these at Target. And when you open them up, there's some microphone gear. Here's a, they call this a dead cat, a dead but it cat. doesn't mean a dead cat. It's a microphone filter. This is my workhorse camera. I shoot uh, all of the main uh, shots and scenes that you see with Smarter Home Life. This is a Sony RX103. Oh, wow. And it's got a... Um, it's a tiny little compact camera. He's a got tiny, a point and shoot in his it's hand. It's a point and shoot camera. Huh. And um, 
You know, I kind of hate the Sony interface a little bit. It's not the greatest, but it works very well. It has a flip-up lens. Uh, lens. It's a flip-up viewfinder, oh, so I so can see Oh, so you can see, see yourself. Yep. Oh. And it kind of pivots. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen dreaded that he was on camera for a second. It kind of pivots a little bit, so depending on what angle you have. Mm -hmm. And I use this for all my product shots because I can go in and change, you know, all of my... Um, oh. Anyways, it's a D it, it has all the settings of a DSLR, and it's basically a mirrorless compact camera. But this is my workhorse and has been for three plus wow. years. And it's a compact, it's a, uh, it's a tiny camera in a tiny house, right? <laughs> Everything is a focus on tiny, right? Wow, so each one of these drawers has little tiny specialized services, uh, different different tools for the, for the trade, right? The trade, yeah. I was mentioning this before. Like, I, I have all kinds of adapters to mount tripods to. This is a, a C-clamp <laughs> adapter. Like that uh, you can mount everything to everything. This is a I tiny... I just found a periscope. Yeah, it's the HTC RE camera, uh, which actually goes fully underwater because, of course, all the underwater smart home stuff I do. <laughs> Not really, but anyways, it's just a cool camera. It's got tripod threads on the bottom. It's super wide. It's kind of a cheaper alternative to the GoPro. Unfortunately, uh, our HTC is no longer making it, but it was kind of a nifty idea. Nice. And uh, So I think one of the most impressive things in here is your cable management, and I'm going to have to flip to the other side for Steve to see this. We've now rotated. In fact, Steve, you might have to come in here too. Let's <laughs> see if we can get Steve in here. So describe the the cable management. So we this have is a uh, shoe organizer from IKEA, hanging shoe organizer. And the kind you put on the back of your door in the dorms. That's exactly right. And I just thought this would be perfect because I was always having trouble. How do I organize cables? How do I make things work? And this is the best. You know, I have things um, set up by, you know, USB and video and extension cables and zip ties and all kinds of things. And they generally tend to go back in the slots that they're supposed to. <laughs> That's actually Generally. that's actually brilliant. I think that's a fabulous idea. Steve was looking at that saying, I gotta that. get one of those. It's it's you know, in a tiny home, space is at a um you know, it's like playing Tetris. Anything you bring in that uh, has you know, something has to take the space, you know, for, for what you're replacing something with. Right, right, absolutely. And the rest of it is basically just very organized in terms of clothing and just using every, every square inch possible. Um literally. This is crazy. Well, this has been really cool. Any uh, anything else we need to see here? Um, well, we uh, covered the the gamut, as it yeah, were. Yeah, we um, the the last thing, and I don't use it for that much. It's a nifty concept. Uh, I reviewed the product officially, but uh, uh, below me uh, down here is um, the the TV stand has uh, Philips Hue smart lighting, uh, the light strip plus embedded in it. Um, I taped it specifically in there. It was, um, in terms of lighting, it's designed to reflect the light internally, so that you get the maximum amount of light. Um, reflected within the uh, the glass um, table, uh, glass um, uh, TV stand. It, it's Here, a, hold a, the camera. I need to get on the ground and no. look at this. Of course, it is, of course, from Ikea, as almost everything is here oh, in, this, uh, in this place. So th this is much like the LifeX. Yes, but it's this is the Philips Hue version of it. Okay, and so, but that's just glowing under the table. Correct. And lighting it up because it's a diffuse table. Correct. Wow, that's neat. And uh, underneath that, at the very bottom, is the recently released, um, I, I like to call it the Echo Cube, but this is the Fire TV Cube. And this is a remote controller for infrared um, devices, so for your AV equipment. And it also has Alexa built right in. So uh, I've changed the wake word so we won't set things off, but I can say something like this. Computer, turn on TV. We see okay. Small cube with a bright light that went across it, and the TV's coming on. But beyond that, because it's integrated with all of the Amazon things, um, you could ask it for things that you traditionally couldn't even do with something like Harmony, because it has all the apps and so forth. So I can say, computer, play mm. Stargate SG-1 on Hulu. Getting Stargate SG-1 from Hulu. We're watching the TV with anticipation here. Now, I may have canceled my Hulu subscription, so this may <laughs> not work. Because there was a subscription question with that whole thing. But generally, this does work. I have demos on it. Yes, yeah, my, Hulu, my, my subscription lasts. But because everything is integrated, you can actually get it to um, do all of the things. This is, gr this is a great device if you're all in on the Amazon world. If you're not quite all in on the Amazon world, it will be a little bit of a standalone device as it is with me. But of course, when I'm, when I'm going to bed because I can't do any, I can't control this thing from other things, but on the way to the bedroom at night, I can say, computer, turn off the TV. Or we'll try that.
Again, computer, turn off the TV. And there she lit up blue, and the TV is off. And what it did was, the last thing I'll say, is that it upgraded. This is an older TV that does not support all the commands that normally go over an HDMI cable, that you can like, change inputs and all those things. It's kind of a, a dumb TV. This gave my TV a little bit more life because then I can actually control inputs and control some more things over the infrared blasters that are integrated into the device. Um, so gave my TV a little bit more life, so that's why I still have it around. Yeah, that's fantastic. All right, well, I'm going to get up off the floor okay, again. Okay. This has been a fabulous tour of a smarter home life and a, uh, and a, a smarter home and a tiny home at the same time That's from right. Joe Deganzik. If people wanted to find out more about your work, where would they find you? You can go to smarterhomelife.com and pretty much just Google Smarter Home Life and you'll find it everywhere. Thanks for being on the show yet again, Joe. Thank you, Allison.